the market we operate in, at least in the U.S., is changing rapidly. The Biden administration has set some uh, aggressive and ambitious goals um, in changing the uh, economy uh, by 2030, including lead, uh, uh, pursuing 80 uh, percent renewable energy for the entire grid. Um, every third uh, car sold by 2030 to be electric and uh, aiming to have a four times increase in sales for uh, heat pumps for heating and cooling in homes. So the graphs here on the side uh, kind of summarize that, but it, it's a market that is uh, changing rapidly towards electrification. And if you think about that, um, it's going to lead to uh, competition in the market uh, because now we have different sectors, different industry converging in onto the one vector that is electricity. And that's going to be uh, there's going to be some competition in that market, as well as in the green building area. Uh, there are competing priorities in projects that we work on all the time where um, we have different as important uh, priorities. Uh, but there's, there is some confusion as far as which one is more important. They are all very important, but we see competition, for example, uh, between prioritizing embodied carbon versus operational energy. And that is something that we wanted to include in this study to show why both of them are very important and operational energy is not less important than embodied carbon. Uh, lastly, uh, what is the actual job of a building? Is it to actually produce energy? Is it to be a, a carbon sink. The, the real job of a building is actually to protect people uh, because living outside sucks. So one of my favorite uh, quotes from a Dutch architect, Rem Collas, is people, we are actually voluntary prisoners of architecture, meaning, meaning that we build caves, we build prisons to voluntarily inhabit, and we spend over 90% of our lives in those prisons. So the quality of these man-made boxes, man-made caves, has a dramatic impact on our health and our well-being. So that is something that in running this analysis, we did not only focus on energy or carbon, we looked at other aspects, uh, including comfort, including indoor quality, durability, resilience, to complete the picture on how buildings are better if they are built to better building standards. And we're going to compare different building standards in, in their ability to deliver on that quality. Uh, a question that we ask uh, uh, people that come to our builder training all the time is, how long do you think, in average, an American family s stays in a house, lives in a house, before they move out again? And the answer we receive from builders is, five to seven years. And that was true before the 2008 bust, but right now it's actually, in average, 13 years. So the reality, in reality, families stay in homes over twice as much what professionals believe. And the increase in interest rates is only gonna make this time even longer. So the quality of the buildings we live in is dramatically important for our uh, quality of life. In addition to that, uh, there's multiple different incentives, rebates, tax breaks, tax credits uh, across the country that incentivize building better than code minimum. Uh, this table was put together for, a, uh, uh, for a, the 2023 uh, Passive House Conference in Denver, Colorado, and it basically summarizes some of the incentives available for people in Colorado, either to rebuild after a fire, uh, rebuild to passive house standard or energy style or whatever, uh, or other are just incentives or rebates that the IRS has nationally. Um, and there are more incentives elsewhere um, in different pockets of the country. So in trying to pursue one building standard and, or another, it's very important to understand what these standards are. Uh, so for the purpose of this uh, study, we compared uh, over a dozen uh, different uh, building standards. Uh, some of them 
uh, adjust regular energy codes, the IECC 2018, 2021, and the draft for the 2024 new issue, as well as the California Title 24. We modeled some, so to speak, high performance building standards, including Energy Star, uh, the Zero Energy uh, Ready Home program by the DOE, as well as the Pretty Good House, uh, and as well as some passive building standards issued by the Passive House Institute, Institute US FUSE, as well as the International uh, Passive House Institute PHI. In doing that, for each, we identified a building standard minimum and, um, and one, one standard that would be more representative of that issue of the uh, building standard. We filled in any, any gaps needed. We're gonna have a whole section about assumptions we made in the modeling. And we compared performance for both building quality and energy as well as carbon. Building quality meaning comfort, indoor quality, durability and resilience. 